Welcome to the Practical Growth Podcast. I'm your host, E.B. Johnson, top writer on Medium.com, published author, and master practitioner of neurolinguistic programming. You've landed on the podcast that takes you on a journey into the heart of relationships and self-discovery. This is a must listen for those who are ready to overcome their toxic relationships and their toxic patterns. You can expect real talk, practical guidance, and raw and relatable guests that you'll be talking about for weeks. Let's get into it. Ooh, what an exciting episode. What an interesting episode we've got for you today. When I tell you that this is going to be one of my top episodes of the season, I mean it because this is a special edition of the Practical Growth Podcast, and this is all about my TikTok viewers, my TikTok fans and followers who have been asking me tons of questions about this topic. So this episode is entirely for you. We're going to be talking about something that is elusive, right? Something that could be confusing, something that is so subtle that most people entirely miss it until it's either too late or the damage is far beyond done. And that, my friends, is the covert narcissist as a parent Now, this is something we've not specifically deep dived into before, but we are going to do it today. We're going to talk about the covert narcissist, why they choose to become parents, how they show up as our parents, and how the damage that's inflicted by their manipulation, by their crisis, by their victimhood follows us throughout our adult lives. Before we jump in, though, you know, I get questions all day long, every day of, you know, uh, this is a really interesting video that I saw you in. This is a really interesting, um, you know, piece or interview that I saw you in, but I don't really understand. I need more information. How do I really get deep? How do I really heal and recover and reclaim my life if I've, you know, spent decades being abused by a narcissist? Well, let me tell you what, lovelies, I have spent the last three years building a huge online database and catalog, which will give you all of those exact answers. That's right. If you head over to medium.com, you can read my entire catalog of narcissistic abuse advice my recovery information, and it all comes from not only my personal experience, but my professional experience as a trauma-informed neuro-linguistic master practitioner. If you head over to eb-johnson.com, you can find my entire Medium profile and blog, and there you can find articles on how to recover from narcissistic parenting, how to recover from narcissistic relationships, and even how to build your own wellness and mindfulness practices for yourself. The best part about this is that this is one of the most low cost ways to not only engage with me and my content, but to also get the accurate, truthful information that you need to improve That's right. Medium.com allows you to read a certain number of my articles, stories, and advice pieces for free every month. And if that's not enough, you can join for just $5 a month to get unlimited access to all my daily articles and advice. It's basically a catalog of trauma and toxic relationship recovery. And it's one of the best ways to kickstart your foundation of knowledge that can help you really heal and change your life. So if you really want to get a deep dive, a deep, 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 deep dive into the topics that matter most to you, head over to eb-johnson.com and check out my Medium blog. You'll be surprised what you find there. All right, all right, let's get into it. The covert narcissist, the covert narcissist as a parent. You know, covert narcissists don't show up like other narcissists. We've been told that a narcissist is someone who like walks into a room and sucks all the air out of it. Yeah, we've been told that all narcissists are these grandiose over douchebags who like to just brag about themselves all the time and really obviously punish shame and destroy people who don't go along with their wishes. But the real honest to God truth is that there are at least half a dozen different types of narcissists. Okay. And that is just scratching the surface because when we're talking personality disorders or we're talking about these kinds of mental health issues that then start to warp our personalities, we're talking about 
disorders and conditions that manifest in hundreds of thousands of different ways. Even if you look at the DSM right now, the way it stands, which is not great, the DSM-5, um, just borderline personality disorder can technically manifest in more than 200,000 different ways. 200,000 different combinations of symptoms can manifest personality disorder in someone. And then to top it off, most people with personality disorders of any type um, present with comorbidities, right? They've got other mental health issues. Maybe it's depression. Maybe it's anxiety. Maybe it's uh, bipolar disorder. There is no end to the laundry list of comorbidities that very often present with someone who has some sort of personality disorder, be that narcissistic personality disorder, borderline personality disorder, histrionic personality disorder, whatever we're talking about. So anyone who tells you that a narcissist is just like some big grandiose dickhead, they're absolutely lying and they don't know what they're talking about. Because here's when you break it down, whatever someone might be genetically right, and there are signs to indicate that certain mental health conditions, um, certain personality disorders might have some sort of genetic markers in them. But not just that, we are still also shaped by our environments. And that is what creates these massive variables, even in narcissists. This is what changes the different types of narcissists that we see. And that is why we see not just these grandiose braggart narcissists who say, I'm the best and you will tell me I'm the best or I'll destroy you. We also see covert narcissists, okay? People who still have that same insecure based self-obsession and need for outward validation. But this person, instead of walking into a room and sucking all the air out of it, overtly, they'll do it subtly by manipulating and isolating their victims in order to gain supply. And frankly, that's why we see so many covert narcissists living throughout society as parents. Yes, this is where we very, 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 very often find the covert narcissist dwelling and inflicting the most damage across society. Many covert narcissists desire to become parents. They want to do it. They come right out of the gate wanting to become a parent. And <laughs> a shocking number of them do. Um, and they use this kind of role in society to shroud themselves in mythology, ideology, tradition, propaganda. And it provides the perfect stage for the covert narcissist to gain their supply. All the while, this type of narcissist will mask themselves as the ultimate victim. They play hard done by. And parenthood allows them to do this. It allows them to say, oh, woe is me, poor me. Being a parent is terrible. It's so hard. It's This child is terrible when all along it's something that they chose for themselves, correct? So today we're going to take a deep, deep, deep look at this covert narcissist, but more specifically, the covert narcissist as a parent. I'm going to help you break down how they behave on the parental journey, why they make the choice to become parents in the first place, and then we're going to look at what their behavior costs us as adults. So snuggle in, get your pen and paper out, whatever you need to do, get zen, get yourself in a good space because we are going to take a deep dive and we're not stopping until we come out on the other side. Right. So let's just start with the thing that I get the most questions about. Um especially from my TikTok fans and my TikTok followers, which this episode I know is going to be particularly important to. Let's talk about how the covert narcissist shows up as a parent. Let's talk about how you spot them, how you start to see them, how you uncover their true colors. Because, you know, it's not easy. The covert narcissist is the hardest narcissist to spot. Way far and beyond any other type of narcissist. They are harder to see and understand than the communal narcissist. They are way harder to spot than a grandiose narcissist. Um, they can even be more complicated and tricky to spot than like a sexual narcissist or someone like that. So how can you honestly uncover whether or not your parent is a covert narcissist? Fundamentally, it all comes down to their intentions, right? Just like any other narcissist with the covert narcissist, it's all about them. It is all about them, what they want, what they desire, what image they're trying to project, what insecurities they're trying to mask, what type of validation they feel as though they are entitled from in the world. 
in general, there's three kinds of ways that a covert narcissist can kind of be spotted as far as parenthood goes. Um, And I'll break these down a little bit more and kind of give you examples from my own life. But first and foremost, they present as being very involved, very good parents, perfect parents. Oh, we love our children. We come to all the things. Look, our kids are great. They get such good grades. We take them to church. We're so, so close to them. We love them. We love them. Oh, what great parents. They make a big show of it. They might talk about it all the time. They might really like wear that as a badge of honor when they show up to your band concerts and things. But then behind closed doors, they are not close with their children. They're cruel. They're hostile. They're manipulative. They're abusive. They give the child no reason to trust them or feel safe. You find total emotional estrangement. And if there's siblings in the house, you'll find a lot of conflict and this kind of oppositional thinking as well, because covert narcissists need to triangulate. They need to pit members of the family against each other in order to create instability so that they can maintain control. And you definitely saw this a lot in my household, which you'll know this if you read my stuff on Medium, if you follow me on TikTok, if you've been listening to the podcast for a while, then you've heard some of the stories about my mother and how she was a covert narcissist. And this is one of the biggest kinds of signs and symptoms that helped me when I started to realize what covert narcissism was, that she was a covert narcissist, right? Because my mom... Loved, loved, loved to project this image that she was like this. She's such a good parent because look, all three of her kids were so good. They were like getting degrees and doing well in school. And we got in the paper for our grades and for our sports and for our music and all of these things, you know, as teens and as children, we were pushed, pushed, pushed. And even as adults, we were pushed to be perfect. And then she would show up for stuff, right? Occasionally. She would show up for a game or an award ceremony and she was absolutely going to be at, you know, high school and college graduations. My mom projected this image like she went above and beyond in all things to make these children who were so healthy and happy and well-rounded and skilled and, and thriving in the world. But the truth was, when we were all home together, away from the eyes of the public, it was absolute hell and pandemonium. She was passive aggressive. She was manipulative. She would run you down. She would make snide comments about your body, about the decisions that you made. You did not feel safe with her. You didn't want to tell her anything because you knew if you told her anything, anything that disappointed whatever fantasy she had in her head that day, that my mother would absolutely hit the hit the roof, hit the roof, tear you apart, scream, yell, cuss. If you really got on her bad side, she would absolutely hit you as well. Kids in my house grew up in estranged and hostile environments. It was not safe to trust anybody. You couldn't tell anybody anything because they would run to your mom and cause problems. It was going to be a problem. And that's what the covert narcissist does. First and foremost, as a parent, is they present this facade of this great, wonderful, loving, involved parent that's creating healthy children. But under the surface, those children that look like they're thriving are performing under stress, anxiety, and desperate, desperate desire to be loved and celebrated by a parent that can't even love and celebrate themselves. Now, the second big sign that you look for for a covert narcissist parent, right? One of the ways that they show up, number two, is they accessorize their families. They accessorize their partners. They accessorize their children. Yes, they build families. Yes, they will project this image of being like Betty Homemaker or the perfect dad or whatever it is. But in reality, all they're doing is projecting. Their children are tools for them. Okay, their children are basically articles of clothing that they wear in order to step out into society and pretend that they are something that they are not. They use their family as a means of masking, cloaking, and then projecting whatever delusion that they want to live in. I like to call it the shield of nobility. And you see it in um, these narcissistic mothers time and time and time again. You'll see it in narcissistic fathers too, but it is rampant in narcissistic mothers, which we have decided that it's not okay to call out for some reason. Um, which is just as sexist as the other the other option. But these narcissistic mothers use this shield of nobility and they use their children as a part of this. And it is to project this like, look at me, I am a mother. I am above reproach because I have given the greatest of sacrifices. And so you will look the other way anytime I do something questionable because I am a mother, the most noble of all professions. And it's like, yeah, motherhood is extremely noble, when you're doing it for noble reasons. 
but the covert narcissist doesn't do that. For them, being a parent is look at me, look at me, look at what I am, validate me, give me praise. And that is completely self-centered. The children aren't even considered in that. Neither is the partner. It's just all about playing that game of pretend so that they never have to look within and fix themselves. And again, you saw this in my own family. Um, My mother had an extremely abusive pattern that she used from child to child to child. And um, no one ever saw that. Right. No one ever saw that in the outside world because the only thing she ever showed the outside world was never her rage, her screaming, her yelling, her cursing at her kids when they were like, you know, five years old. The only face she ever showed the world was this hardworking mother who had been so hard done by by the world and who was just doing the best she could all the time when really she was coming home every day to unload on her kids. And last but not least, the real big giveaway. The backbone of covert narcissism is victimhood. The covert narcissist who is a parent loves, I mean, they absolutely, they function on weaponizing their victimhood. That's right. They play the victim at every single opportunity and make no mistake. Parenthood is one of the only places in Western society in which that kind of woe is me, pity party, look at me behavior is not only accepted, but it's encouraged in a lot of circles. A lot of people are encouraged to get attention by whining about their children, by whining about how hard it is, by whining about how bad their children are or about how bad the lives of their children are going and how hard it is on them. In Western society, which is the only thing I'm going to speak on because that's the only thing that I have thoroughly experienced, researched, all of those things, parenthood is one of those places in which no questioning is ever allowed, right? To question someone's parenthood, oh my God, there's an instant backlash. Well, you can't question the way someone does things. Well, I absolutely will. I absolutely can and I absolutely will, especially when I'm going to be the person living with their kid for the next 70 or 80 years. Yeah, I absolutely will. But in the West, we've made this taboo. We've made it taboo to be like, "Mm, do you think that's, do you think you're doing that for your kid or for yourself? It's become totally taboo to ask that. And that is how the covert narcissist slides in. That's how they weaponize their victimhood. That's how they start to use their children against the world in order to get validation, in order to get attention. And if that doesn't work, then they'll manufacture crisis. And here's what I mean. Anytime my mother was questioned, anytime my mother was questioned, anytime you were like, hey, this made me feel like crap. Do you think that maybe you shouldn't have done that? It was Instant pity party. Well, you know, I didn't mean to call you a 13-year-old slut and a fat whore, but, um, you know, I had to work really hard today and you cost me a lot of money. Anytime she was questioned, it instantly became about how hard her life was, how much childhood trauma there was. There was always an excuse. No matter what she did wrong, she was the victim. And sometimes that meant turning her children into the villain. Sometimes, more often than not, it meant turning her husband into the villain. She would turn anyone else into the villain in order to escape accountability, in order to avoid saying out loud in reality that she had screwed up, done something bad, done something horrible, done something abusive, just like what was done to her as a child. And when that didn't work... She would manufacture a crisis so that everyone around her had to scramble to save her. She did this to my brothers all the time. She, once my dad was no longer her total carer, um, she would put herself in positions in which she fell into absolute calamity in order for someone else to come and save her. So the house that we, that I grew up in, the the main house that I grew up in, um, she allowed it to completely rot. After my dad left, because she didn't want to live in it anymore, right? But there was no way in heck she was going to stop doing her QVC shopping and her fast food purchases and her animal purchases 
and all of these things. There was no way she was going to stop doing any of that. So what she decided to do was to just let the entire house fill up with animal feces and trash and sewage and mold until it literally fell apart and someone had to come in and scoop us up and put us in another house. Okay. And this was my mother's pattern over and over and over again. She got given houses like this. She got given cars like this from her friends. She would spin like ridiculous tales and tell them all this stuff. And they would literally give her cars that she drove for years. This was her pattern. She would manufacture a crisis so that A, she could get her supply by complaining about it. B, manipulating everyone around her emotionally. And C, getting everyone else to do the heavy lifting in life so she didn't have to do shit but walk around, buy stuff, and complain. The covert narcissist, above anything and beyond anything else, is a victim. And they talk about that victimhood and they bring it up and they weaponize it against everybody all the time. Anytime they want something, they become a victim. It's the excuse, it's the reason, it's the action, it's the season, it's the belief, it's where they exist. And that is why they are so absolutely toxic, but also hard to spot because they use your basic compassion and your empathy against you. So why would someone like this want to become a parent? Right? Why? <laughs> why? That's the second biggest question that I get from my TikTok viewers. Why did they do this? Why would someone who is this toxic or self-centered or nasty choose to become a parent? Well, first of all, it's, you know, it's hiding in plain sight, which is what narcissists love to do. It's hiding in plain sight. It's an unquestionable place in society. They can use it to push themselves up to higher societal standards, but also they can use it to manipulate people so easily and to get people to do things for them. They hide behind societal standards and tradition. That's why they love to become parents. Um, but what you'll also find is, secondly, so many covert narcissists have a desperate need for revenge. Okay. Yes, a lot of narcissists have trauma, but more than anything else, narcissists are inherently insecure, which can give them a, a desire for revenge, even against people that they don't know or that they haven't, you know, even met or seen. It, it causes them to create this idea that I got to be better. I have to be number one. Okay. That's what that insecurity creates in them. So you get this person who's like, well, I'm going to get back at my crappy parents or at this subpar pass that I had by creating my own children. And then I will make them better. And then that will show them that will show society that will show my parents that will show whoever it is they want to impress or project a delusion to a lot of these covert narcissists have perpetual chips on their shoulder. They've got something to prove. And that's why a lot of them, you know, they don't, they don't start companies. They become parents. It's a way easier route. But what you also find is that for the covert narcissist, their supply is totally different than a grandiose narcissist and even a communal narcissist, right? Cause like a communal narcissist, like Teal Swan, they need a ton of people around them saying, you're the greatest, you're holier than thou. They need a huge supply. The covert narcissist is slightly different. They get their supply through victimhood, through that self-made disaster. They get it through pity. They get it through emotional control, taking total power over the mental beliefs of other people. That's how they get their validation. That's how they get their control. That's how they get stuck in. They use pity. They use guilt. They use shame. That's how they fill up their supply. So if they can make you fill those things, then they are in control of you and they feel great about where they're at. They feel like they're doing the right thing. And all of these factors combined with this victimhood mentality, this poor me mentality, makes for a perfect abusive parent and that all really kind of starts to add up and make sense when you start to see the patterns right when you start to see how you've been affected by the covert narcissist it's like having a veil ripped off of your eyes right because the damage is deep the damage may even be you know more horrific, more long lasting than the damage we get from the overt narcissist because they're predictable. Once you see a, you know, 
a, a rude, nasty, self-obsessed person for who they are, it's pretty predictable what decisions they're going to make, what they're going to say, what they're going to do. But that's not that's not the case with the covert narcissist. So that's why you see certain patterns in their victims. The adult children of covert narcissists very, very, very often grow up to have totally warped chaotic relationships. I've got so many clients, so many viewers, so many readers who, you know, have things like borderline personality disorder and who describe childhoods, which are very similar to mine in covert narcissistic abuse. Covert narcissists teach their children, you know, by the time you're a teenager, you learn that you can't even trust your mother or your father. And that teaches you to be distrustful of all intimate relationships. But worse than that, because covert narcissists, no narcissist can tolerate being second to somebody in the room. Okay? Never. Never, ever, ever. A covert narcissist, so let's say you have a covert mom, loves to say like, oh, look at my kid is the president. Oh, isn't he the best person on earth? But secretly in their head, they're thinking, well, I'm the best person on earth because I birthed that. Right? That's how this kind of covert narcissism, that's how their thinking works. So they have to tear down their kids. Okay, you are going to get run down at some point. You are going to get beaten down. And that warps the relationship that you have with yourself, with your inner self. And then you pile on emotional and mental trauma, even physical trauma. Yeah, you got somebody who is not in touch with inner them. The relationships you learn to build are entirely warped. And that's what leads into the self-esteem issues, right? That's the second biggest hurdle that we often find maybe even the first, you know, everyone's different, that we find with these narcissistic parent relationships. Covert narcissists destroy the self-esteem of their children. They destroy the self-esteem of their children. My mother loved to tell people that she was like raising me on these, you know, new age, 90s, girl power, feminist principles, but it was all a load of crap. She made comments about my body all the time. There is a reason I was obsessed with, obsessed with my image, my weight, the clothes I was wearing, if I was attracting men or not. There's a reason I was obsessed with that. And it you can't just blame it on the media because I wasn't allowed to consume a lot of media. Okay. I wasn't watching Paris Hilton on TV. I wasn't allowed to buy cosmopolitan magazines talking about extreme dieting fads. Okay. Covert narcissists are notorious for passive aggressive behavior for petty punishments. They teach their children over and over again to doubt their worth as a person. My mother used to make comments about my, you know, because I was adopted. So she would make comments about my paternity, my maternity. She would make comments about my skin color, my hair, my eyes, the way I dressed. By the time I was 13, I completely doubted my worth. I was like, well, I, well, I have to get a man if I'm going to be worth anything. And thankfully, I broke out of that, you know, but this is what they do. They they destroy the self-esteem. They don't make it safe for a child to build self healthy self-esteem. But here is, in my opinion, the worst thing, the worst, the worst effect that a covert narcissist has on their kids. And it is that they normalize abuse. They teach their children that abuse is love. Yeah, a lot of that is mental and emotional. Okay, because the covert narcissist prefers to pull strings and to, you know, kind of be the man behind the curtain, as it were. But what happens is because you grow up in this environment in which you're always being mentally twisted, made to feel less than, degraded, or told that you have to perform, you have to be perfect in order to get love, um, it creates a baseline For all of your adult relationships, your friendships, your intimate relationships, even the kind of work that you build yourself, the careers that you choose, the kind of work environments you will put up with, the kind of bosses and coworkers you will put up with. Covert narcissists teach us to pursue that kind of chaotic, abusive, negative, nasty, destructive baseline as our norm. And then they will also teach us that if we can't get that from other people, we better self-destruct. So you will see the children of covert narcissists grow up to have toxic partners who make passive aggressive, you know, hits at them all the time, who tear them down, who insist on putting them in second place. 
and you will also find them recreating those own their the same toxic dynamics in their families, right? They will repeat the patterns of their parents on their children. And that sets us up for generation upon generation upon generation of failure, of hopelessness, of unhappiness, of of unfulfillment. So we have to break the pattern. We have to break the pattern. If you've realized that your parent is a covert narcissist, the only way that you are going to feel better is by breaking the pattern. You've got to step out of the roadmap that they place down in front of you. You have to wake up. You have to educate yourself, get therapy, read all the books, read all the articles, listen to other podcasts, follow some of these incredible creators on TikTok. You know, the world of narc talk will change your life. It will change your life. Some of the information you will find there. There is a world of knowledge and information out there and most of it's free. And it will open the door and help you to see the world as it really is. You can step out of the delusion of the narcissist. But if you're really going to break the pattern, then you also have to focus on building emotional intelligence. I know you guys ask me over and over and over and over again. I think I'm becoming a narcissist. How do I not become a narcissist? I don't want to be like my parents. How do I make sure I don't do the same thing to my kids? Uh, you focus on emotional intelligence. That's the thing. All narcissists, you know, unless they are super, super, super awake, like mental illness on TikTok, highly recommend you follow him. They have low emotional intelligence. That's why they have low empathy. They can only see themselves. They usually come from a reactive place. They don't really understand their emotional triggers. They don't understand their emotional motivators. They just react. They feel nasty. They feel negative. They know that when they get validation in whatever way they want it, they feel better. So they pursue that. They're just constantly trying to feed on that need for validation to mask their insecurities. If you want to avoid that spiral, that loop into narcissism, then you focus on building emotional intelligence. I'm serious. Go Google that word. Go to my blog. Emotional intelligence is learning how to, A, yes, understand your emotions, but also understand your trauma. Understand how the experiences in your life have shaped you. And then in the same stroke, that emotional intelligence allows you to self-actualize. You get to realize who you want to be, how you want to feel, how you want to react to a world that stresses you out, a world that is filled with narcissistic people. When you have this foundation of knowledge, not just like textbook knowledge of narcissism and narcissistic abuse and how that plays out, but also this knowledge of self, how your emotions fuel you, how they move you and how you want to be in the future then you can start rebuilding your relationship behaviors. You start by rebuilding the relationship behaviors you have with yourself, and then you go outward. You elevate the caliber of people you allow yourself to associate with. You set boundaries. You set standards around how you want to feel in every sort of relationship, including work environments. And then you focus on how you want to treat others and how you want to be remembered. This is how we break the cycle. This is how we escape the spiral of narcissistic abuse. And this is how we set new baselines for ourselves. It's important to remember that no matter what foundation your parents gave you, no matter what track they set you on, you can make the choice at any second to stop dead in those tracks, turn around, flip on the bird and do something entirely for yourself. As a victim of narcissistic abuse, sorry, as a survivor because we're not victims here, as a survivor of narcissistic abuse, you get the magical choice to learn how to be fully yourself. You get to learn how to choose yourself. And that is one of the most beautiful gifts that we can get in this life because it gives us an entirely blank canvas in which to rewrite ourselves and our future. Right. That's it. Wow. That was it. That was a long episode. But, you know, we had to get in there. I told you we're deep diving in. We are exposing these narcissistic parents and we are taking back power for ourselves. We are not victims here. We are survivors. And with that energy, we have the power to do anything that we want to do. Thank you so, 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 so much for listening today. I hope you found something in this episode that really empowered you or inspired you or at least gave you a little bit more understanding of what is a really subtle and a really nuanced thing, right? These covert narcissists. If you want 
to leave a five-star review of the podcast. It'd be greatly appreciated. And better than that, I'll give you a free ebook. That's right. If you love the episode, head over to Apple Podcasts and leave a five-star review. Once it's live, take a screenshot, send it to me, and I will send you a free ebook. It's really that simple. So if you loved it, leave a review to everyone else. Make sure you're following me on TikTok for weekly coaching, for daily videos, for a whole mess of information. And if that's not enough, you can always find me on medium.com. Thank you so much again for listening. I hope you have a great week and a great weekend ahead. Until next time, keep your heads up and keep moving forward. Bye-bye.